once upon a time, but not very long ago, there existed the all-powerful kingdom of Salawat. Ruled by wise and benevolent leaders, the kingdom existed for the good of many, but mostly for its own good and that of its stockholders. The kingdom of Salawat was surrounded by less powerful kingdoms. These were looked upon with magnanimity by Salawat and allowed to exist. The other kingdoms were jealous of Salawat, but knew better than to arouse the ire of the giant who, while benevolent, could act harshly with retribution for misguided forays across its borders. In return, Salawat also respected the borders of the other kingdoms, so there was peace and general amnesty among the kingdoms. Within the kingdom of Salawat, leadership was invested in the nobility called the market. The marketing had many responsibilities and courtly duties and served as the country's air force, spreading the word of Salawat's magical powers. The foot soldiers of the kingdom were called the knights of the dinner table, also known as salespeople, as they sailed from merchant to merchant. Now, the power of the kingdom came from the wonderful magical elixirs and potions it sold to all the people. So wondrous were these magical things that all the people knew their names and beset their local merchants to obtain them. In time, the people became spoiled by the magic of just adding water to dust, a miracle of miracles, wondrous elixirs and foods would mysteriously appear. The cleverness of Selalot's noble air force, the marketing, was unending as it further captured the hearts and minds of the people with magical messages and incantations such as good to the last drop, foolproof rice every time, stove top instead of potatoes. <laughs> it was a wonderful age and the people were happy. In the middle of all this happiness, however, were lots of merchants who competed with each other and worked very hard to scrape out a living. These merchants were the targets of Selalot's knights of the dinner table. They would cower and quake when the knights appeared and tremble at their battle cries. Our advertising will bring the people into your stores. You can't pass up this deal. Your total store volume will decline. Most of all, the knights had the power of knowledge. So powerful were the knights that the merchants were often forced to almost give away Selalot's magical dust. And the people were happy and loved Salamat. Knights were powerful, admired, and respected. Life was good, and life was easy. But the merchants were clever and began to join forces and gather strength. One dark day, they discovered a magic crystal ball that made them all know it, and even foretold the future. This crystal ball gave them so much power but now they could stand on equal terms with the Knights of Selalot and no longer had to quake in fear. Now it was the ruler of Selalot and the marketing who quaked in fear as they lost control of the merchants. Perhaps forever. Outside the castle walls, many of the Knights didn't understand the new crystal ball and the power it gave the merchants. They continued to fight their battles as they always had in the past, but their armor and chainmail, their frontal assaults, their banzai charges could no longer intimidate the merchants. They became tired and, without knowing it, gave in to the merchants, concession after concession. In the castle, the king, the marketing, and all nobility seemed confused and frightened as they watched the merchants take away their power. To make matters worse, other kingdoms began to grow and get more powerful as they developed even better elixirs and potions. No longer were they content to remain within their borders and settle for their small piece of the pie. Particularly when it was discovered how much wealth could be gained from these wondrous elixirs and potions. These giant kingdoms began to swallow the kingdoms of Selawat. One day, an enormous kingdom of smoke and fire swallowed the kingdom of Selawat itself king, knights, and the nobility became its subjects, and Selalot lost more of its power. These were difficult times. It seemed the whole world was changing. The merchants and other kingdoms were growing, gaining power and swallowing each other, and behind it all, 
the people themselves were changing. It all happened overnight. The people had changed. They no longer looked the same. Many no longer lived in the same place. And worst of all, oh, woe this day and this night. They no longer ate the same foods or drank the same elixirs. Now they seemed more picky, more self-indulgent. They were concerned about their health, but they also liked lots of special sweet fattening stuff, and they wanted it right away. It was all very confusing. Yesterday, they would eat things in groups called families. Now it seemed there were no more families. Children were eating by themselves. Mothers were back at work eating at their desks. Dads were grabbing a bite at the local fast food. Others never ate at home anymore. Even worse, many people weren't eating meals. Instead, they began to graze, eating only a little bit at a time. This frightened many of the merchants. The ruler of Celalot and the nobility and all the people who lived in the castle were also confused and frightened. They realized that if the kingdom of Celalot were to survive and prosper, it had to regain its lost power. They looked around and took stock of their predicament. What they saw was not pretty. Their borders had been breached. The knights of the dinner table were fighting valiantly to drive them off, yet they were losing ground. They saw some of the old knights still fighting using mace and lance only to quickly be on horse by both merchants and knights of other kingdoms. How brave they were. Battered but unbowed, they continued their struggle, unaware of the new world. Still, they won battle. Their numbers thinning, watching their comrades in arms disappear, outmanned and outgunned by their enemies, they fought on, unaware of their plight. As the ruler and the nobility looked out on this heroic struggle, they realized that no longer could the battle be fought from the castle. No longer could the marketing successfully conduct the war from behind the parapets. The struggle was out there, where the knights were. They had to establish strong outposts to conduct small local battles to beat back the foreign enemies, secure the kingdom's borders, placate the merchants, and win the hearts and minds of the people once again now understood the need to make greater use of the knights of the dinner table and to provide them with the new elixirs and potions and new weapons with which to deal with the merchants. A totally new strategy for the kingdom had to be developed. No one knew if it would work or precisely how to go about it, but they figured, oh, what the hell. They had to be about it as quickly as possible. And in the meantime, had to tell the knights the new strategy. The knights had to realize the new struggle they were in and be prepared for it. So a new knight was created to fight the merchants, the people, and the other kingdoms. Stripped of his antiquated armor, he was now equipped to respond quickly to the competition and the customer needs. This knight embarked on a new adventure into the future. Will the new weapons help, or could they backfire? Will Selawat lead the way with new elixirs? Can the people be won over and the competition be beaten back? Perhaps only time will tell. But in the meantime, what are you going to do?